Hello everybody, welcome to the Redman TV. It is daily news time once again, where Liverpool's transfer news is very thin on the ground, as you can imagine, as we build up ever closer to the Champions League final. But we're here, joined by Mr Ben Kelly, Hello. for this show. Uh, four big stories for you today, uh, first of which being, Liverpool are prepared to submit an offer for Real Sociedad defender Diogo Llorente. That is reported from AS. Mm -hmm. So, don't know who Diogo Llorente is. Yeah. He's uh, a 25-year-old centre-half for uh, Real Sociedad. And according to Spanish newspapers, they claim Liverpool have been intensely monitoring the talented centre-back for a while. It's claimed Jurgen Klopp's Champions League finalists intend to make an offer in the region of £22 million. Pounds. Uh, the report adds that Lorente has a £44 million pound release clause in his contract, but Sociedad uh, accepts that a deal could be concluded for less. Now, there's been a lot of centre-half talk for Liverpool mm -hmm. uh, in recent weeks, the biggest of which being De Ligt. Do you think centre-half's really an area that Liverpool need to strengthen in the summer? Um, I, I, to be honest, I'm not sure. I was I was all in on Dejan Lovren being sold, but um, you know, thinking about it a little bit more recently, mm. you know, even though he's not been playing so much, I feel like... He's, he's probably quite good to have around the squad. He seems like quite a, a funny, you know, outgoing guy. He's obviously best mates with Mo. Yeah. So I feel like if if Liverpool are smart, they would probably try and keep Dejan Lovren on the books yeah. this summer, at least for another season. Therefore, that money then becomes useful elsewhere. You mm -hmm. know, um, I, like this 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 play. I mean, I, look, AS are what they are. Um, I, I don't think this will happen purely because it sounds like one of them. You know when you do scouting mode on FIFA career mode and, and you just pick somebody who looks good? It feels like something like that. Um, and, you know, look, 22 million, it, it, it would be a fair price for, for you know, for a mid-range La Liga centre-back. Um, but it just doesn't it just doesn't feel like it's something... It doesn't feel like a Jurgen Klopp signing a Spanish mm. centre-back. It just it mm. doesn't feel right. I yeah, I'm, I'm with you there, I think... Now, if we take it into the ballpark that Joe Gomez, when he's fit, is our first choice centre half next to Van Dijk, then it's probably Joel Matip and Lovren's fourth mm. choice. But Lovren's still a, probably one of the best fourth choice centre halves you can yeah, have yeah. in the market. And I think you're right. He, he's it's whether you think we need a fifth. That's the question. That's if true. you think we need a fifth, it, you know, because you end up in a situation. Joe Gomez is out um, for a little while. Um, you know, like like has been this season. You know, you then only a suspension away from having. Or another injury away from having mm. no basically no centre back cover. Mm -hmm. So it's whether you think we need a fifth, but then are you going to spend twenty two million pounds on basically a fifth choice centre back? That, you know, you need to go for somebody then like Clavin. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, like that's the kind of cat. That's the kind of player who fits into that category. Or you go for a really young kid. So maybe we look at um, the, the the progress of Kijana Hoover and and see see where he's up to. You know, after the summer, I'm hoping he's going to go on the pre season tour and stuff. So. Mm. Yeah, I don't think twenty two million quid for what would essentially be either a Dejan Lovren replacement or a fifth choice centre back. I don't. I think we can invest that money more. Wisely. I agree. And if, if you don't know much about this guy, it's just some top line stats. Sociedad finished ninth uh, in the La Liga. Uh, twenty teams in La Liga. I think they finished joint on fifty points with the two teams below them as well. So they very much could have finished eleventh, depending on goal difference. He's uh, the guy's kept six clean sheets in, in 21 appearances this season uh, and he concedes 0.87 per 90. So it's, you're right, it, it, you're looking at mid-tier, fifth sort of choice centre-half guy and, and if, if reports are to be believed about Liverpool's spending going to be very thin, you know, not mm -hmm. really looking to spend more than sort of the, the £30 million he spent on Shaqiri, we're trying to just keep spending low. Seems silly to spend £22 million on a fifth choice centre-half, but let us know in the comments are you looking for a centre half? And have you seen much of um, of Lorente? And do you think he's really a move that the Evan Klopp would be interested in? But it's an interesting one for us. And let us know any comments you've got in general about Liverpool's transfer news, because we'll get through these stories and take some more of your questions at the end this time. Um, secondly, Liverpool are reportedly lining up a new contract for defender Joel Matip. So from one <laughs> centre half to the other, according to Football Insider, the club is said to be keen to reward the centre back for his good uh, form over the past few months. A Liverpool source told Football Insider that the club are concerned about strong interest in Matip and the prospect of losing him are keen to time down to a long-term deal to replace his current agreement. I think, you know, if we're taking Lorente with why do we really need to sign a fifth choice, I think on the flip side of that, we should really sort of be looking to keep Joel Matip at the club considering his, his recent performances. Yeah, absolutely. I think this makes sense for everybody involved. I think overall, Joel Matip will, will take third choice at Liverpool. Yeah. I think... Um, you know, again, if you're looking at Joe Gomez's injury record, if you're him and you're thinking, well, 
you know, the chance of Gomez being fit for a full season and mm. me getting no games are probably is probably quite small. So I'm probably going to get on the pitch, yeah. you know, and get some starts under my belt um, if I stick around. And um, they're probably going to give him a pay rise, especially if we win on Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, it, I think I think he's I think he's going to be sound with that, and I think I'm sound with that as well. You know, mm. we discussed the option of, you know, um, we've discussed how. Dejan Lovren's probably the best, one of the best fourth choice centre backs yep. you can have. Probably the Certainly. best in the league. Yeah. You'd pro probably say that Joel Matic's probably the third best third choice centre back yeah. in the league because you know the form that he's put in since Christmas. You know, um, monstrous performances. Mm. You know, against the likes of um, who we played in the Champions League, Bayern Munich, Barcelona, both Barcelona okay. legs. He was absolutely fantastic. You know, so. I, I think this suits everybody. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, we can just get it wrapped up as soon as possible. Yeah, I agree, mate. I, I'm really looking forward to keeping up these. Fringe players that have become really sort of important to the club this season. You're looking at Joel Matip, you're looking at Di Origi, these guys that really have shown that they've got a lot to play and they've got a lot to fight for in this Liverpool club. And I really like, obviously, there was news that came out about a month ago about potentially giving Di Vocca a contract extension. Mm. I like locking down these guys and rewarding them based on the performances that they've shown. Because I'm sure Matip knew when he when he started the season, like Lovren said himself, last season it was Lovren in, in Matip's position where... You can just sit on the sidelines and just watch these guys um, watch these guys play. Whereas I really like what Joel Matip's done. I really like what he's about. I think he gives a different dimension to our centre back pair. And of course, there is it, with Dilip being one of those transfers that is such sort of like once in a lifetime sort of uh, signage because he's 19 and he already looks so fantastic. There will be people saying we need to go for this guy. But for me, I think the same argument with Diego Lorente. I think that money should be spent elsewhere for Liverpool. Mm -hmm. We should be looking at you know midfield, maybe uh, cover for the left wing or a, utili a utility player for that front row. So the better, if we can keep hold of our current players, all, all for that, definitely. Mm -hmm. But talking about current players, a guy who's been tearing it up in the Scottish League this season is Ryan Kent, who is apparently the subject of interest from newly promoted Aston Villa, who obviously beat Derby uh, last mm -hmm. night in the playoffs. Aston Villa are in pole position to sign Liverpool winger Ryan Kent after securing Premier League promotion, Football Insider understands. The Midlands Giants, which is... A, take that as Giants. Well. Midlands Giants. Giants. If they're the Giants of the Midlands. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, among a host of clubs battling it to land the 22-year-old permanently on the back of an impressive season on loan at Rangers. Liverpool are willing to listen to offers for Kent. A fee of around £12 million was initially thought to have priced Rangers out of the market, but Villa will be able to afford such a fee this summer. What's your take on Ryan Kent then, obviously, as you do the development watch? Yeah, um, if you want to go and see um, all my views on the development watch, um, they, we released a loanee special at the weekend, um, basically assessing the seasons of all the loanees. Um, Ryan Kent, though, yeah, he's had a fantastic season at Rangers. Um, for me... I've discussed it on that show. I'll, I'll echo it a little bit here. I think he's unlucky. As with many of the loanees now, mm. it, all the loanees and a lot of the youth players as well will be feeling unlucky just of how good our first team yeah. squad is. Yeah. Unfortunately for Ryan Kent, he's got a lot of talent, but he's getting nowhere near our squad. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm starting to I'm starting to feel the same with Harry Wilson. I still think there's hope for Harry Wilson, but I, I'm starting to feel the same with him because you can't. You can't have Sadio Mane and then the backup is Ryan Kent. Yeah, or, I agree. I just don't think he's that level. Um, so I think what... what I mean, he's been linked with a permanent move to Rangers as well. I think what would make sense for, for Ryan Kent now would be to move to Rangers permanently, play consistently in the Scottish League, Mm. Um, and then get a move to the Premier League two, three years down the line because that will be ultimately his goal to play mm -hmm. for the play in the Premier League, whether that be for Liverpool or anybody else. Yeah. This move might be a little bit too soon for him. Be I mean, because there's no evidence really yet from Villa's perspective that he is Premier League quality. He's mm. never played in the Premier League. No, of so, so for me, he needs to go. He needs to put in like a couple of consistent seasons worth of good performances in at Rangers under Gerrard or you know, if Gerard was to move on at any point, you know, under under whoever mm. um, and, and and really show what he's all about, then this type of move might be right for him. I just think that right now he needs to go and he just needs to make a name for himself. He needs to become his own player. Mm. At the moment, he's very much Liverpool's loanee, Ryan Kent. You know, will, will Ryan Kent rejoin Liverpool? Will he okay. play the Jurgen Klopp? And I think he needs to become... He just needs to grow and mature a little bit. And, you know, he's had moments this season where he's lost his head. Obviously, he was in the... Um, in, right, in yeah. the um, old firm, you know, where he, where I think, I think he whacks Scott Brown in the face, which yeah. you, know, you know, nobody's a big fan of Scott Brown, but you know, he, he needs to learn to be mature on the pitch and and just 
as I say, yeah, just coming to his own a little bit, and I think moving to Rangers permanently would be a good because I, he, like he knows the club now. Okay. He clearly has a good understanding and working relationship with Steven Gerrard. The fans all like him. Yeah. For me, that is the move that makes sense. Villa would be a good club because they are, a, a, look, a traditionally a big English club. You know, obviously, you know, people people can laugh at Midlands Giants or whatever. Traditionally, Aston Villa are a big club in England, so it would be a good move for him to go there, especially with you know other players around him. You know, you've got the likes of Jack Grealish. I really rate Dean Smith as a Tommy manager. Um, yeah, Tammy Abraham. It's just whether or not it's just a couple of years too soon for him. Okay. I could be proven wrong. At the beginning of the season, I said that Harry Wilson's loan at Derby wouldn't work out. So I, who am I? Who am I? In the interesting one for me is that obviously he's won two huge awards, hasn't he, in Scotland? Mm. He won yeah, yeah. The he won Rangers Young Player of the Year and PFA Young Player of the Year. So which Scottish is, PFA. Which, which, is very, which is no mean feat. <laughs> but for, his, for his first season as well in, in Scotland, so do you think that... My counter argument for that would be, do you think that that level maybe to do that in your first season suggests that maybe he is too good for the Scottish League? Well, you know, that is a good point, perhaps. Um, and I suppose he's not, it's not like he's a local lad. He doesn't owe the club anything. Mm. You know, he, he could go. But at the same time, I, th I think right now, a, move, a permanent move away from Liverpool, I think, is what suits him. I, okay. I just don't think he's going to be involved in our squad anytime soon. And if people disagree with me, let me know in the comments. Um, yeah, let, let us know. know. Would, are you interested? Obviously, there's a lot of talk yeah. about Harry Wilson potentially coming back to Liverpool. And I know a lot of people would really like to see that. Have you, are you still keen on seeing Ryan Kent or are you looking at this as a case of say you take Harry Wilson obviously didn't get promoted and say we want to ship him on for the £25 million mark that's been suggested if we shipped on Wilson and Kent that's you know £37 million pounds worth, yeah. of, worth of surplus there to spend on potentially a first team bench player yeah. which is an interesting thing to consider so let us know in the comments we'll take your questions at the end what's your opinions on Ryan Kent would you keep him sell him loan him let us know but final story is one revolving around the goalkeeper, which we discussed last uh, yesterday. Edwards identifies whole player to replace Liverpool man who's blown Klopp away in training. Uh, the Merseysiders are in the market for a keeper as they prepare to listen to offers for Simon Mignolet after he made just two appearances all season. A Liverpool source has told Football Insider that Sporting Director Michael Edwards and his recruitment team have identified Scotland international keeper Marshall as a replacement for Mignolet. The 34-year-old is out of contract at Hull next month and the club's stated plan is to offer him an extension but it has stalled amid doubts over the future of manager Nigel Adkins. Marshall has made 44 appearances, including 43 league starts this season, and has a wealth of top-level experience after lengthy stints at Cardiff, Norwich, and a shorter one at Celtic. Goalies, Ben. Goalies. What's your take on goalies? Are you looking for um, experience? I'm looking for... I'm just looking for somebody better than Simon Mignolet okay. and Laurie Carrius. Um, Obviously, look, Karius is on loan for Shipdas for another year. Yeah. Um, he's not had a great season there, but I think that's going to continue. Um, Mignolet is probably wanting to get on with, with his own career, really. Yeah. He's, you know, he's, he's, yeah. he's had to put life on hold, really, for a year because yeah. of what happened to Karius. He's had to take, you know, he's had to take one for the team, really, and, mm -hmm. and put his own career on hold for for a season. Um, I think the thing is, we've got. It depends. You've got to judge. You know, we're looking at. Um, you know, a situation where we need to trust what Klopp and the likes of, um, fucking hell, what's his name, the um, youth manager, yeah, but Barry Lutus and oh, yeah. the other fella. Oh, you know more than I me. I know, then. I should know that name, it slipped my mind because I'm live on YouTube. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've got to trust what the coach is saying about the young goalkeepers, that's what I'm trying to get at. We've got three very good young goalkeepers. Yeah, Neil Critchley, that's the guy, yeah, that's the guy, thanks Tom, Tom. The Neil Critchley. I, I knew that name, of course, obviously. Um, yeah, we've got three very young, good goalkeepers in the academy. It's just whether any of them are ready. You know, we've got um, Conan Kallaire, we've got Shamal George, and we've got Kamel Grabara, who's been out on loan in the second half of the season. It's whether or not those any of those guys are ready. I know um, Kallaire does the warm-ups with Alisson and Mignolet in, on a match day. Yeah. Shamal George is obviously a really highly rated youth prospect, um, and I think Grabara is probably the, the main one out of the three, although... I, I struggle. I mean, I, you can take what you want from Gravara being loaned out when the mm -hmm. other two haven't. You know, mm -hmm. you can draw your own conclusions from that. So, yeah. so for me, there you go. Well, okay, you, you move and you lay on for ten million. Mm -hmm. Do we have a goalkeeper there who's ready to make the step up? And if we do, then great because mm -hmm. it's about time that we had you know another another quality youth prospect involved. And in you know, we've got Trent, but it's like well. Surely one of these lads must be ready to make that step up. And, yeah, you know. I, I like the thought of that because I think that w the discussion we had yesterday were between me and Tom is we would somebody asked the question of potentially bringing Pepe Reina back to the club, you know, as, as a 
as a veteran style, mm. re super experienced, reliable guy you can put in goal for you know your cup runs, uh, mm. and just a guy you can rely on in terms of rotation. But I think if you're going to go down the route of youth, I think that's clever in the sense that you can, if, he, if these guys have been there learning from Allison in training and learning to be, you know, the modern goalkeeper, you know, mm. trying to tailor their, their skills more to Edison, more to Allison, how, on not just being a, a great shot stopper, but sort of being so more influential yeah. in, in the open field play. So, I think if you're going to go for a 34-year-old goalkeeper, you go for Pepe Reina. What what, mm. what what's this guy done? You know what I mean? It's not like who are you? You know, it's not. You know, we've been linked with the likes of Valdez in the past, like with the Casillas. We brought in that Manninger who'd play, that Manninger who'd played at quite a high level. Marshall, you know, he's he's a Hull player. Like, you know what I mean? Is he is he better than Mignolet? Probably not. No, no, he's not. He's he's more experienced, but more experienced in what? More experienced in playing Championship slash lower end Premier League football. I just, I, I just don't game, think don't think this makes sense at all. I think you're better off either investing in the youth and letting them really develop under Allison. Allison's a world class goalie. It doesn't matter whether or not he's experienced. Not in fact, he is experienced because yeah. he's played in the last stage of the Champions League. Yeah. He's been in a title race. You want to go and play in the Champions first League? Season. About to play in a Champions League final, potentially win a Champions League on Saturday. That's all the experience you need, yep. along with his ability. Yep. For me, you don't don't fanny about. This is a Brendan Rodgers signing. Yeah, this is a Brendan Rodgers signing. Don't fanny about fa si signing thirty four year old goalies from Hull. Sorry, You've summed it up well there. I think I, I think I agree with you, mate. But let us know in the comments. What's your stance on goalkeepers? Is it are you agreeing with us? Where you look for youth players to come into the the setup, learning from Allison and trying to adapt their game more to to his ability or? Would you bring in a 34-year-old experienced guy, albeit if he's from Hull, he's, he's got a lot of appearances for them, 43 lead starts. But let us know in the comments. We're keen to have a conversation with you, talking about of which. Have we got any comments, sir, Tom? Um, yeah, Pete says, we need cover for Robbo, but it's just so hard to find a great attacking ball player and also great defensively sound left back. Who's happy to sit on the bench as well. Yeah. So that's, that's the issue. I think the cover for Robertson has got to be done by the same scouting team. You've got to leave that to the scouting team. There's no point really in us speculating over what names that we that we think we could sign because none of us once really thought about Andy Robertson as an was. option instead. Yeah. In, in, when when he signed, I remember being on all at the time and we'd sign Andy Robertson. I was like, oh, a bit underwhelmed. Yeah. So you've got, I think with the cover for Andy Robertson, you've got to let the scouting team do their job again and pull another one out of the bag with the cover for Andy Robertson or you look at the likes of Adam Lewis and the youth. Yeah, I think, I think I'm with you there, mate. I think it's very hard to really find a carbon copy of Andy Robertson because of just how hard he works. Because obviously he's coming to the team and, he, and ever since he takes over from Alberto Moreno, has just not stopped, has not took his foot off the gas. And he's become such a, an icon and a hero for the club already. But my argument to that is, you know, we, we did pluck this guy from obscurity from, from Hull. There's got to be a handful of left backs out there that are, have the same passion and drive, oh, yeah. hunger, and, I, and yeah. I get what you're saying there. I think that it's not like there's obviously the biggest name sort of left back at the minute, sort of like you know Ryan Sessegnon, you know yeah. going down from with Fulham. It's, it's, it's he's more of a winger, even. Yeah, you know what I mean? that's what I mean. So even that, but he's that's where if we're going to pull a name out, he's probably someone that comes to the top of your head yeah. because he's just a guy that's that's yeah. available. But I think you're right. I think if we were to sign left back cover. It will probably be a more obscure sign of a guy that we've not heard of, and I think that's going to be the trend with this summer. To be honest, yeah. I don't think it's going to. We may see, you know, smoke and mirrors, and there's a lot of talk about not spending money, and then all of a sudden Timo Werner comes off out yeah, of nowhere, yeah. which is absolute dreamland, and and that's that's the ideal scenario. But I think what's more likely is Klopp finds you know a handful of cheap, you know, between the eight and fifteen to twenty power, twenty million pound mark, and we've we just go okay. Yeah. We've, 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 got, we've trusted you once, we'll trust you again and again. So your left back's a strange one, but I do, I do, think, I do agree that it, that's got to be an area that we, we address. But thank you for your question, mate. Uh, Johnny Tweet says, thoughts on Ramos? <laughs> <laughs> we were going to leave with this. We were going to clickbait you all and have the title as, should Liverpool make a move for Ramos? Or... Even better, Liverpool make move for Sergio Ramos. Um, I, then we'll Photoshop I, him into a Liverpool kit. I don't think he gets in our team. I, I, I think I think we've got. Big statement. Though. I, I don't think he does. I don't I, like. He's he's thirty four. He's not a ball playing centre back. But he is Sergio Ramos. But a he's, guy he's, he's won yeah, yeah, he's, so much. But yeah, he's going to come in. He would come in with the, the absolute bollocks on him, wouldn't he? Look at play me or I'm not coming. So yeah. so I suppose if we did sign him, we would end up playing him. But I I don't think we need him. I don't. I think we need to focus on 
developing our own leaders rather than signing one. So we've got, we've seen Jordan Henderson come into his own this season. Yeah. We've signed Virgil van Dijk. Mm -hmm. Man United need Sergio Ramos because they need a quick fix. They need a leader to come in and sort them all out because they're not on the same long-term project sort of thing that we are. M Liverpool don't need somebody to come in and go, you need to do this, you need to do this. We are growing into our own in that sense. And for me, that, that is why we don't need Sergio Ramos in our side. We don't... We we've got players who are good for our other players already. We've got we've got the kind of arm around the shoulder kind of players that, that Sergio Ramos just isn't. And I don't I I think he'd be a negative. I think he'd be a negativity in our in our dressing yeah, room. Yeah, you make a I really think he's good a very point. Mean player. Yeah, uh, he's, he's got he's very Paul Pogba esque, isn't he? He's very much he's going to come in and it's going to be all about Sergio Ramos. And obviously, I, I don't know what he's like. like a Balotelli. Yeah, I don't know what he's like as a person, but obviously we all, we all know what happened last year in Kiev and what happened with him and Salah. And the, the comments that he's made sort of prior to that situation, he's very much an ego, Diego Costa style shit out. You know, that, but, and some people love that. Some people absolutely love that from Luis Suarez. Like I say, from Diego Costa, so I'll tell you that he, he absolutely loves Ramos and what he's about. But it's a really strange one for me. I think that... I don't think we'd sign him. And I think the United thing's bang on. And I'd, I'd like the fact that he's become available now because then what it says to me is if United, if, if De Ligt goes to a Barcelona, then Ramos would be going to a, to a United and that's, that's the problems aren't solved whatsoever there. And I don't I don't think Ramos is, is a Liverpool player at all. But you can't, then the flip side is you can't argue with the leadership and what he's won. You, know, mm. you can't argue with having... If, he, if he's going to come on a free and he would be willing to... You know, close his, close his career out for a club under, like Liverpool under Jurgen Klopp and maybe win a Premier League or another Champions League with a different club, then you can't really ignore the, what, what he's won and what he brings to the table. So it's, it's going to be really interesting to see where he goes, but I think you're right. I cannot see him going to, go to Liverpool. But yeah. interesting question. We were, we were pondering that in the office upstairs. Any more, Tom? Uh, last question. Um, this is on the loan ease and stuff. Daryl Wilkinson's, Daryl Wilkinson says... Keep Wilson and Grilich, loan and sell the rest. Loan and sell all of them? All Except of them. For Wilson and Grilich. Uh, okay. Um, Grilich, I, 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 Grilich, like Grilich. I, I, again, I just don't think we're, I just don't think we need them. I think, I think we're better than them. I, I, Marco Grilich has been told that he's the best Hertha Berlin midfielder for They've the last 20 seen. years. Yeah. So, so, like, if that's his level and sat, I just don't, I just don't think we, any of the, I, I, Maybe Harry Wilson, maybe Harry Wilson is can be, but yeah, yeah. Again, where was he yesterday? Playoff final, biggest game of his career. He was, he wasn't there, and I just think, I think, I think we've moved on. I think we're we're all in a mentality where, st maybe still a little bit where we're looking at like a Brendan Rodgers team, and it's like, well, you know, this young player, we need a young player to burst through and you know, give us a bit of something. We don't. We, we can sign. We can sign any pretty much any player at the moment in world football if we want to. Yep. Liverpool are one of the biggest clubs. In the world right now, you know, we talk about you know the size of the club anyway. But right now, everybody is talking about Liverpool. Everybody is watching Liverpool. Everybody will be watching Liverpool on Saturday night. The whole world, their their eyes will be on us. I don't think that we can. I think if we want to, we can look at Harry Wilson, a, a Welsh young prospect, and go, well, we can get twenty five million for him, and it's not going to hurt us. I, I, we won't miss him. That's what I'm trying to say. If we sell him, we won't miss him. If we can use him and use him properly, then sound, we can get something out of him. But I think right now we're in a position where we we're in a luxurious position where we can pick and choose, and and that is the first probably in my life it's the first time that we've been in that kind of position. Completely agree, mate. And, and the, the the thing that confuses me is I don't, and I said this on all these shows, I don't know what Liverpool's plan is this summer. Mm. All we can go off is the one sort of little bit of evidence is that we're not going to spend much money. Now I don't know if that will change depending on if we sign anybody so say, uh, sorry if we depend on if we sell anybody to so say if we sold you know Bruich and Wilson and Kent and we we surplus over 50 million pounds does that go into the kitty mm. of right so the, the the 30 million pounds we had set aside now becomes 80 million pounds to spend on two players or one big player yeah. then great sell them because you're absolutely right we have we have superseded a level now where we don't need to be facilitating our squad with lesser players we can go and buy Players who could be in the first team, but would be happy to sit on our bench because we're a Liverpool, because we're because we're challenging for the Premier League, and I've been in back-to-back -back Champions Leagues, and it's hard because I know when Klopp first came to the club, he said, you know, I don't want to do it this way, I don't want to spend the money, I, I I like being able to bring players up, but sometimes you have to realise there is a golfing class between where we were three years ago, off off the breach, uh, 
sort of transfer of a woman from a Rogers to a Klopp team and three years into Klopp. And I don't know if Harry Wilson's at that level. I don't even know if Gruwich is anywhere near it. I haven't really seen much of Marco Gruwich this season. And I, I know that, like I say, he's very well heralded by Arthur Berlin, but they're a team that's significantly less, or significantly leagues lower than, than the class that Liverpool have. So to be honest with you, I don't know. I, I think we're going to have to wait until after the Champions League final until it becomes clear as to what really the plan is. And all of the, all of this is a positive. Like yeah, it's not definitely. it's not a don't negative that we don't want to that. keep it. It's, it's it's about where we are as a club. Growth. It's, it's it's growth compared to five years ago when we may have had to like rely on some of these loanees. Mm. You know, think about um, st- drafted in Stephen Cork. You know, yeah. cancelling the to loan. Play ben Woodburn. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's it's not it's not a bad thing. It, I mean, it's bad for the it's unlucky for the players, I suppose. You know, but but as far as a as far as the club goes, we're in a position now where we really can be picky and choosing and just think about ourselves. I think that's good. I think that's fun. Yeah, and you do, I'm sure you'd much rather be here than you know having to having to recall these players from loan because they have to bulk our, to get our squad out. So, yeah, we'll see. Time will tell. Obviously, look forward to the Champions League final. We've got a whole host of content coming out very very soon on that stuff. I know you guys are very eager to see what we've got in the pipeline. So, don't worry, it'll be with you soon. But thank you very much, Ben. Thank you very much, everybody at home. Thank you, Tom, behind the camera, for tuning into the Daily News. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. I was going to say something.